I didn't expect Nvidia to do this so soon and people aren't expecting more AMD chips in their cars and I'm in support of this NFT. Ah, let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're gonna be starting off today talking about an accomplishment that's happening in collaboration with NVIDIA and Valve, which is that NVIDIA's DLSS is now available for Valve's Proton on Linux, which is a pretty big deal for Linux gaming. It means that not only is NVIDIA's technology being implemented on this, but Valve is incredibly taking it seriously, the amount of effort that they have to put into the software development side in order to get this stuff ready for the upcoming launch of the Steam Deck, which I know that DLSS is not going to work on the Steam Deck because the Steam Deck is based on AMD's chips, just like all of the consoles are. But the fact that this is being worked on so hugely by Valve to get this implemented shows that they are taking this new step forward. This isn't like a Steam Link situation or a Steam Box where we've had different Linux implementations of Valve stuff before in order to play Steam games on a, a Linux box. This seems to be a little different. Also opening up is they now have the Battle Eye Anti-Cheat Agent, which allows you to play things like DayZ or PUBG, as well as 24 new games being supported by Proton. So this is a pretty big day when it comes to a Linux support for gaming, thanks to Valve and their efforts that they're putting forward here. So we have DLSS support, we have anti-cheat support, which was something was said that could, could would be the hardest part to do and then more games. This is a good day indeed. Are you celebrating this? Let me know down in the comments. And down in the comments on Friday's video, you let me know that you enjoyed the whole like UFD deals thing that I was doing, which is like harkening back to like four or five years ago where I used to do daily deals videos and we had a whole website. But since it's Cyber Monday, I wanted to bring to you a couple of deals that I think might be good for you if, in case you're trying to pick up some tech items for yourself or some other people. Number one, Sony's WH-1000XM4s are at a great price of $248. $250 for what are arguably the best active noise cancellation headphones on the market. I cannot recommend them highly enough. I had XM2s for the longest time. I sent them to South Africa with Reese. Love the XM4. I picked them up at this price. We also have a two terabyte Samsung 970 Evo Plus going for only $199. That's for two terabytes. I bought this exact drive for Catlin to send her back to South Africa with her laptop a year ago, and it cost me $100 more than this. $199 for two terabytes on what's, again, arguably the best PCI Express 3.0 drive you can get is a really good deal. And then also MSI has a decent deal on their 32 inch 1440p 144 Hertz FreeSync monitor at $260. We'll have all of this linked below in the video description in case you want to pick any of them up. What's also a great deal is today's episode sponsor. My friends, today's video is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Christmas came early this year because I got the new performance package by Manscaped. So let's go ahead and check it out because not just your balls will thank you, but your jingle balls will thank you too. We're all singing this holiday season, jingle balls. Manscaped has created the world's first all-in-one men's grooming kit that has you covered from head to toe. You've got the Lawn Mower 4.0 waterproof cordless trimmer with its built-in advanced skin safe technology, which helps to reduce all the nicks and cuts on your most sensitive decorations. It has a cool LED light that's helpful for grooming on those cold, dark winter nights, or alternatively, you could use this and, you know, just do it but the Christmas tree although your family probably wouldn't like that. Now here's a stocking stuffer for you. We got the Crop Reserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. And new to the collection is the new Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. This is something that, you know, you think you don't need as you grow older, because you're like, no, nah, I can just pluck them out whenever they start getting too long. But like, legitimately, I'm in my 30s now using this. Why did I wait so long? I'm just trim your nose hairs, people. The Weed Whacker has 360 degree rotary blades and the same skin safe technology from the trimmer so it prevents tugging and tears in your nose and your ears. And Manscaped's no longer just for below the waist grooming. In addition to the products for your face, they now have you covered head to toe with their new Shears 2.0 luxury six piece stainless steel nail kit. Every guy out there should have Manscaped on their wish list this holiday season. If you got a special fella in your life, you might want to consider picking this up for him. And for a limited time, you also get two free gifts. You got the shed travel bag and the Manscaped anti-chafe boxer briefs that come included with the package. That's a gift on top of the gift 
which pretty much makes it the best gift that you could potentially ever give them. So if you want to get it for this holiday season, go to manscaped.com and use my promo code UFD to get 20% off plus free international shipping, plus those two free gifts. Again, go to manscaped.com, use my promo code UFD, and you'll be off to the races, making sure that your jingle balls are all merry this holiday season. You know where else you can keep your jolly old balls going around? You can keep them in a car, right? Tesla now having the Ryzen chips show up in their Model Ys in China. This is something that is unexpected because the Ryzen chips up until this point have only been in the refresh Model S and Model X. And as far as I'm aware, those are only shipping in the US. So the fact that there's a Ryzen chip upgrade that's making it into their lower end vehicle in a completely different market does seem to indicate that Tesla might be moving away from Intel for their media control unit and is just full sale on the AMD production. More AMD chips in my car, please. But in case you drive around in your car and you listen to music, Spotify's car view is getting retired. Spotify just kind of removing it from some people and saying that they're working on new features that they can implement and make way for new innovations so that you can have all of that. I didn't particularly like Spotify's car view. It just like, it always seemed too onerous for me to actually search music whenever I was like stopped. I didn't didn't, wasn't a fan, so I'm good, glad that they're getting rid of it. And are you glad about the crypto market? Some people aren't because it had a little rough weekend. Let's get into crypto stonks. Bitcoin up 5.25% to be at 57,600. You can see that as of Friday, it kind of fell off to around $43,000. And now it's up a little bit. A lot of this being connected to potentially the new variant of COVID-19. And that is allegedly why a crypto sell-off may have happened. But again, speculating on this just leads to people in the comments telling me that I'm completely wrong and they know exactly how these random markets work. Ethereum up 6.33% to be at 43.41 and Dogecoin up 1.5% to be at 20 cents. On Friday, the meme stunks down ever so slightly, I mean a lot, 5.69% loss to close below 200 is what GameStop did and then AMC closing down 3.24% to be at 37.63. But speaking of AMC and their whole meme stock like thing that they are, this is honestly, the first time that I'm seeing like a mass consumer NFT and being like, I, I'm on board with this. This makes a lot of sense. And that is AMC will hand out NFTs to Spider-Man's No Way Home if you purchase tickets through them on their website or their app when pre-orders start today. So you can claim an NFT from them and it'll just be a commemoration of you being part of the launch of this new Spider-Man movie, which just, it makes so much sense. I, like, I remember going to the theaters back when, like, what, Pokemon 2000 came out and you got that, like, ancient Mew card that happened. That was amazing. Or, like, actual physical collectibles. Getting digital collectibles, not as cool to a child, but to an adult. Like, this is a nice commemorative way of doing things. It's stored on the blockchain. It makes a whole lot of sense to me to do NFTs this way. Rather than art, it be a commemorative event to just symbolize, hey, I was here participating in this thing at this time. I think that's where NFTs are going to shine through and where their lasting potential is going to be. But you can, again, argue about that down in the comments. Tell me I'm wrong. But you know who's not wrong? NVIDIA, never, never wrong. We're talking about them yet again because that RTX 2060 refresh that we're expecting to be announced on December 7th, where the RTX 2060 is gonna get 12 gigabytes of VRAM and be the like entry level card that NVIDIA is releasing, which like I'm hoping and I know this is wrong, I'm hoping will be under $250. Like it just, cause the RTX 3060 is 329, you're gonna sell 2060, what? Anyways, the big news about this, according to video cards, is that it's going to have the exact same amount of CUDA cores as the RTX 2060 Super, which is 2,176, up from the previous generation's 1920. And it's also going to have a higher default TDP of 184 watts compared to the Super's 175. And then it's also going to have that 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which puts it in a really weird place, considering the RTX 3060 is 8% faster than the 2060 Super, that's kind of exactly the difference here. But at 329, I guess they could technically sell it at like 279, and that would make like sense price to performance wise. I just, I don't know why. I mean, I get why they're releasing it because it's easier for them to produce on a different node than the current seven nanometer, eight nanometer node that they're doing it on. It's just that 
I, it has to be priced right. That's that's the whole thing. And given the current state of things, I'm not exactly sure that's going to happen. But let me know what you're sure of, because I'm sure that this episode is over. It's the end of hot news. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this one. I'll see you tomorrow for breakfast. And again, let me know if you enjoy the UFD deal section. I kind of went a little long today. I might want to cut that down for the future. But as always, feedback on how I do the episodes here. I'm open to hearing it. Sound off. Goodbye.